Thank you, Amelia. If you want to go ahead with questions. Okay, we'll go ahead and start with Robin. <laughs> Obviously, you guys had it uh, fairly competitive, uh, you know, through, I guess, until the seven minute mark of the second half. Did you sense that maybe the schedule and the grinds and you know, the, the well documented travel you guys have had to go through finally caught up with them down the stretch there? I, I mean, I think it is affecting us, Robin. Um, you know, it was it's still a two point game under six to go. I think five and change, it was still a two point game. And then, you know, we just completely fell apart on really on both ends. And when you miss layups and you miss free throws and they go down and they convert, you know, in those same type of shots, uh, you know, it is a little bit deflating. And then, uh, yeah, I, you know, to answer your question, there is a sense of fatigue with our guys right now. We're trying to do everything we can. Uh, you know, most of them will go back and sit in the cold tub tonight. That's what they did. Uh, after Penn State is as soon as we got to the hotel in Maryland, uh, they, they all got in the cold tub and in the ice tub. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, trying to get them moving and set, stretch st uh, sessions uh, right now to try to fight through, you know, this, uh, this crazy stretch that we're on. But, you know, I thought our guys battled. I thought they played hard. I didn't think it was an effort thing tonight. Uh, we just really struggled to get anything going. I thought we stood around uh, too much, especially when things got tough. Uh, you know, when you move like we have been, uh, you know, we, we've been pretty darn good. The Il Illinois and Penn State game, for the ma majority of it, were as good as we've been. But you know, these last, you know, seven, eight minutes of games right now, we are. I think we're wearing down, and I do think a lot of it is fatigue. All right, next, Chris Bestnet. Hey, Freddie, have any update on on Derek's uh, situation with him not playing in the second half? And also, wanted to ask the decision to maybe play a little bit smaller lineup those last seven, eight minutes. Too. Yeah, no, nothing too much, Chris. Uh, with Derek, he he, just, he wasn't feeling well. He wasn't feeling right, so we uh, we made the decision to hold him out, and you know we'll evaluate him again tomorrow. Uh, but you know we're just in a position right now. We're not going to take any chances, especially with the schedule that we're on and, and what we've had. You know, as far as playing small, you know this is a team that played small, and it just wanted to get our most skilled guys on the floor uh, to try to get something going. And you know, as I said, we got some really good looks, but then we had some possessions where we just you know, we did stood around too much and didn't didn't have anything going. And you know, Teddy took the quick one. I thought you know the game was still in reach, and they go down and convert off it. You know, we've been better, I think, with shot selection, and that's why our transition defense has been better. But you know, the other big factor. I mean, we turned them over 17 times and scored four points off their turnovers. We were getting steals, and the ball would just you know fumble out of our hand when we had numbers, uh, and we failed to convert on those. So you know, activity level I thought was good. We just really struggled to convert. Uh, once we did get the turnover. Sam McEwen. Hey, Coach. Two other stats that jumped out at me. 12 missed layups. I wonder how much of that was them and how much of that was you guys just missing. And then they only got eight second chance points, but their offensive rebounds came at a key points. Uh, there was one in the first half where you guys could have gone up eight, and they, they tut it to two. And then there was one where they were up three, and they went to five late in the second. Um, could you talk about just those those two things, the missed layups and then those second chance points when they got them? Well, the, yeah, in the missed lay, I'll, I will have to go back and, and watch them, but I thought a lot of them was just, uh, you know, we missed them right there at the rim. A couple of them uncontested, Sam, and you know that's that's deflating when you when you miss those. And then I think we were only fifty percent uh, at the free throw line. We go six for twelve, and you know those. You got to convert those, man. When when your margin for error is so thin, you have to find a way to make your layups and make you know at least seventy percent of your free throws, which we have not done uh, this year. But you know that that was if you can get those. Obviously, at the rim that's what you're looking for. It's the highest effective field goal percentage shot in the floor, and we just uh, we really struggle to convert them. I, what was your other question, Sam? I'm sorry. The offensive rebounds. Oh yeah, the rebounds. When they got their second yeah. chance. Yeah, they were they were huge. Uh, you know, they only got six of them, but it seemed like they hit threes. Uh, you know, I think on three of those shots or two of them at least, and they were they were critical times. But you know, as small as we played, you know, to only allow six, that's that's a big factor. We just missed so many shots on the other end. That's that's why uh, they out rebounded us by so much. Thank you, Doctor Adam. Fred, you mentioned fatigue kind of starting to set in. Now you got to turn around in 22 hours, play these guys again. I guess what goes into preparing for a Big Ten opponent and back-to-back -back games. It's obviously pretty rare. Uh, what, what's your guys' plan for the next few hours here? Yeah, I mean, it's especially rare when you've gone through what we have. Um, 
you know, I'm not sure there's ever been anything like this to play this amount of games in a short amount of time, you know, after coming off, uh, you know, the, the break. And I know we've talked a lot about that. Don't need to harp on it anymore. But, you know, it, it is something we got to find a way to not let it this linger. And if you let that go into tomorrow's game, <clears throat> you know, it, it can get ugly pretty quick. You know, when you play the back to backs, uh, you know, it's all about rebounding, finding a way to get yourself back. You know, the concentration level, we'll watch an edit on. Uh, you know, things tomorrow, make some adjustments, and then hopefully go out uh, and play well and knock down shots. But, you know, it is. Our guys are they're, they're, they're completely exhausted right now. And, you know, we've got to find a way to muster up the energy, put this one behind us, and give everything we got. And then we get 48 hours off, which is going to seem like a month for our team uh, heading into the Purdue game. And then I think we get two days off after that one before we finish off with, uh, you know, every other day again, all the way up through the Big Ten tournament. Uh, so just got to find a way, uh, Robin, tomorrow to come out and play with great energy, uh, find a way to convert when we have opportunities, and uh, give everything we got, leave it all out there. All right, back to Sam. <clears throat> you want uh, Delano to keep staying aggressive on those three-pointers when he's open. I know he hasn't had the easiest year shooting, but – you want him to keep shooting those? Well, it was good to see him. I mean, he knocked down his first two. And, uh, you know, we worked on it this morning at the shoot-around uh, after we got done, was just really working on that shooting pocket. And I thought he did a good job getting to that early. One of those was a desperation three at the end of the clock. Uh, I think he was two for five, if I'm not mistaken, overall. So, you know, really two for four with the desperation shot. And, uh, you know, I thought when his feet are set, yes, to answer your question, Sam, uh, we do want him to shoot those. And, you know, a lot of it's the experience of, of getting those looks. And when his feet are set, the ones we don't want are the ones, obviously, off the dribble or, or when he's contested. Uh, but, yeah, when, when his feet are set, we're, we're comfortable with Delano shooting those. Thanks. All right. Last question for Coach Jacob Thea. It seems like there's a little bit more stagnation, particularly in the second half, than we've seen in the last couple of games. How much of that was, do you think, maybe some of the finishing problems kind of uh, wearing on guys, how much of it was Maryland defense, how much of it was what do you think kind of went into some of that stagnation? Yeah. Well, they, they are they're a phenomenal defensive team you know, give give them credit, uh, you know, for that, for, for going out there and, and making life tough on that end of the floor and uh, you know, I, I just I really did think as things got more difficult for us, instead of cutting harder and moving more, we got more stagnant and that can't happen. And, and again, we're going to go back and watch and edit on it in the morning when we get the guys up for breakfast, uh, get their treatments and watch and edit. You know, we've been doing a lot of that and just really trying to teach through film. And, you know, that's where we are right now with the, with the schedule. So, you know, it's all about going back and, and finding corrections and adjustments, uh, you know, hopefully going out there and executing on the floor, uh, you know, for those 40 minutes. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Jacob. I, you know, our as the game got more difficult, I thought we got more stagnant as opposed to continuing to cut hard with pace. Uh, and that's where we've had success lately. And that's where we've had our good possessions is when we get our movement. You know, I think you go from 19 assists in about 30 minutes the other night, you know, to under 10 tonight. So that shows our movement wasn't where it needed to be. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.